Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, Tuesday morning. Good to see you. God bless you. Hope you're doing well this morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Are you having your coffee this morning? South Carolina is in the house. Good morning. Got your juicer going? Drinking some of that good green stuff? Where's my lady with the protein shakes? My man with the breakfast tacos? What you having for breakfast this morning? High Energy Tuesday. High Energy Tuesday. Orlando, Florida. Nice and warm and sunny, I'm sure. Peachy oatmeal. All right, Arkansas. Water and popcorn. <laughs> popcorn, wow. All right, all right. Good morning, good morning, Florida. UK. Afternoon in the UK. South Holland, all right. Canton, Ohio, there you are. All right, Bronx, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we need some coffee. We need some. And that's something how we get to where we need some coffee. Gotta have some coffee. Sounds like an addiction. Indiana, Washington, D.C., good morning. Coffee and donuts. There it is right there. What could be better? Mississippi. Good morning, good morning. God bless you guys. Thanks for the hearts. Every time you tap the... The, um, yeah, great wake-up music, isn't it? In the name of Jesus, Israel Houghton. Um, every time you tap the screen, you release hearts. So just tap, tap, tap away. Keep tapping. Keep tapping, yeah. You can go to the little man in the lower right-hand corner and invite people onto the broadcast with you. Yeah. God bless you, St. Louis. Coffee and bagel. All right, all right, all right. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Orange Park, Florida, sunny and cool. It's cool in Florida. Cool in Florida. You come to Chicago, it's cool in Chicago. North Carolina. Tampa. Actually been kind of foggy in Chicago these mornings. Kind of crazy, huh? All right, Palos Heights, Shepherd High School. All right, all right, all right. Your ear is ringing. I hope that's not because of me. <laughs> All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Tuesday morning, we're fired up. High energy this morning. High energy Tuesday. High energy Tuesday. God bless you. Great to have you on the broadcast this morning. Let's get right to it. We want to jump in and talk about our daily quiet time with God. Oklahoma City, New Orleans. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Roz. Okay, Roz, Orange Park, Florida. Good to see you, Roz. Roz used to be a part of Cornerstone some years ago here in Chicago. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. You thought I was going to scope? Yeah, I've been scoping. We've been scoping. This is Leader Scope with Greg Howes. Good to see you. God bless you. We started talking about developing a daily quiet time with the Lord. And uh, we're using Mark chapter 1 and verse 35 as a uh, foundational scripture that we start with is describing Jesus getting up early in the morning, a long while before daylight, and he goes out to a solitary place in order to pray. That's Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. And so we see in that verse that Jesus was consciously dependent on his Father to receive increased strength and also to receive consistent direction for his life and for his ministry. And he also knew that he would be confronting the enemy again and again and again, and therefore he needed power and strength that he would only be able to get from spending time alone with his Father. I also told you yesterday that prayerlessness, when we do not pray, it is evidence of our attitude of self-sufficiency. But when we do pray, prayerfulness is evidence that we are humbly dependent upon God. And so we need this daily quiet time with the Lord because we are attempting to overcome or manage the noise of life the hurry of life, the busyness of life, the crowds of life. We're wanting to overcome that or manage that. The noisiness of life, and you know as well as I do, life is very busy. Our schedules are filled up. Our calendars are filled. seems like we're just constantly running from one thing to the next, and life can get very noisy. And so I believe that God wants to show us how to manage the noise of life. Someone uh, remarked on Facebook this morning that it was interesting that I was using the term manage the noise instead of eliminating the noise. And I'll tell you why I'm using the word manage instead of eliminating. 
um, you, you may be able to eliminate the noise for a few seconds. But I guarantee you that there will be some more noise coming <laughs> right around the corner. So I don't know if it's possible to ever fully, completely eliminate all of the noise forever. But we can get in a place where we can manage the noise. We can manage it. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, oh my God. That's Psalm 42. That's David. So we're going to find that quiet time in the presence of the Lord. And we want to get there because, number one, it pleases the Lord. It pleases the Lord when we want to spend time with him, when we want to be with him. And then we can meditate on uh, what we are reading and studying in the Word of God in order to saturate our souls with the truth of the Word of God. And we're receiving benefits when we are alone with God, when we're in that quiet time with God. We're receiving information. We're getting truth from the Word. We're receiving guidance and direction. We're getting a high level of wisdom. The Lord is going to be encouraging us. He's going to be filling us with power. And it really is a place of pleasure when we get into that uh, time as, on a consistent basis. It can be pleasurable to us, and we know that it is pleasurable to the Lord. As a, Azerbaijan, is that, am I saying that right? Good morning, wow, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is where you are. Thanks for being on the broadcast. God bless you. And so we want to get into that place of necessary solitude. Jesus went to a solitary place and then he prayed. So we want to look at this, this uh, characteristic of being in a place of solitude, of, of being um, uh, alone with God. Being alone with God. No, I do not speak that language. I apologize. English only right here. All right. Tongues once in a while, but mostly English. Okay. Um, loneliness. Loneliness. Don't mistake loneliness for solitude. Because loneliness is the place where you start talking to yourself. And when you're lonely and you're talking to yourself, you're only going to get depressed. And when you're talking to yourself, especially if you're in a position of isolation where you've pulled away from other people, the enemy is going to come right in and he's going to take advantage of that as well. So we're not talking about loneliness. We're talking about solitude. Solitude is the place where God talks to you and you will be edified. You'll be edified in the presence of God as he shares his heart and his mind with you. Loneliness is only going to lead you to personal poverty. But a place of solitude in the presence of God is going to open the way to personal abundance. So we're not going into poverty, we're going into abundance. You might call it a sanctuary. We're looking for a sanctuary, a place that is set apart as a refuge, a refuge from danger, a refuge from trouble, a refuge from hardship, that, that place in the presence of God, a place of solitude, a consecrated place. It is a place of purity, a place of sacredness, a place of holiness. It is where we look and we see. It's where we watch for what God is revealing to us. It's where we are instructed to make all things according to the pattern that God is releasing to our lives. Yes, it's a place of refreshing. Amen. And we see God's pattern, and, and we see his model and his example for building a sanctuary. It's a place to go when we, uh, when we need to get away, when we need to listen to him. It's a place of refuge when we are stressed out or when we are under attack. That sanctuary is a place of intentional worship, a place of intentional consecration in the presence of God in the presence of God. Now, Psalm 1 mentions something very powerful for this place of solitude in the presence of God. Let me just read Psalm 1 to you, the first several verses. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, Notice the progression there. We can be walking in the counsel of the ungodly. We're still moving, but we start getting in trouble when we stop and we start standing in the path of sinners. And once we sit down in the seat of the scornful, then we're really in a mess. So keep moving. Just keep moving. Yeah. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. 
Watch this now. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf will not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. I want you to notice that one statement. He meditates in the word of God day and night. Meditation day and night. That word meditate means to ruminate. You know what that is? That's like a cow chewing its cud. You uh, are, are feeding on the word of God and, and you swallow it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah, and you swallow it. It tastes like honey. The word of God is sweet to your taste buds. You, you swallow it and then you bring it back up so you can chew on it some more. And the more you chew on it, the more you get out of it. To ruminate, that's what meditation is about. It is contemplation in order to devise strategies that can be used to further advance the purpose and the outcome of your life. Meditation is involved with that. Meditation is the remembering of the Lord. Remembering in the sense of keeping or calling something to mind. It's for the purpose of your consideration, for the purpose of your reflection, reflecting on the good things of God. Meditation in the Bible means that you are practicing reflective thinking on biblical truth so that God is able to speak to you through the scriptures. Now, we're not talking about Eastern religion. Transcendental meditation is focused on emptying the mind. Biblical meditation is focused on emptying the mind of all distractions in order to fill the mind with the truth of the Word of God. Transcendental meditation, Eastern mysticism, is aimed at becoming detached from the world, losing personhood, losing individuality, in order to merge with the quote-unquote cosmic mind. Ooh, that sounds attractive, doesn't it? But biblical meditation is aimed at becoming detached from the controlling, hindering forces of the world and then attached to the true and living God by grace through faith. So we're not practicing Eastern mysticism. We're practicing biblical meditation that is going to draw us close to God, that will connect us with God, and will fill our minds with the truth of the Word of God. It's a place of worship, which is communion with God, elevating the spiritual over the natural, managing those distractions, managing the noise of this life. It is a place of instruction where we are increasing our understanding of what God is calling for from our lives. It's the place of encouragement where we are inspired and we're filled with courage for service. And it's the place of transformation where there's a change of nature and a change of form in our lives. Meditation carries us into the renewing of the mind, um, monitoring how we think, motivating us to live according to God's purpose. Meditation is going to help produce stability in our lives. It's going to lead us into the place of, of, of uh, resting in the Lord, trusting in Him. It's taking us into the place of joy in the midst of trouble. And meditation draws us close to God in intimacy with Him. Intimacy with Him. And we'll say some more about the power of meditation when we get into this again tomorrow, I believe there's something in meditation that God wants us to grab hold of. And all of this is about managing the noise of life. Not eliminating it, but managing it. And we've got to work on getting rid of all the external distractions so we can be alone with God. And once we deal with the external, then we start dealing with the internal distractions that keep us from really focusing in on the voice of the Lord in our lives. God is helping us. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord and the power is might. Be encouraged today. I love you. I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much for being on the broadcast today. I'm believing you're going to have a great day today. Get along with God sometime today. Spend some quiet time with Him. Read the Word. Meditate on the Word. Worship Him. Commune with Him. Open up your heart to His voice. Let God do 
a mighty, mighty work in your life. God bless you. Have a great day. High energy today.